The least understood lights on the Altair 8800 are these group of status lights up in the upper left corner. But these lights can tell us a lot of information about each machine cycle or bus cycle that's going on in the Altair. So in this video we're going to go through these in detail and understand what we're learning from them. The way we're going to do that is with a simple program that we're going to single step through. That program exercises most of the different types of bus cycles that we can see on these lights. Now that program listing is available as support material on the Altair.clone website. If you came from that website, the link to the uh, program is right there with the link to this video. If you found us right on YouTube, then the link to the video is, excuse me, to the uh, program listing is right below the video down in the description. You might want to get that and follow along, but you won't find that it's really critical. All right, so let's get going here. We have already put the simple program into the Altair, and it is at address zero. What we're going to concentrate on to begin with is these eight lights here that are grouped above the line that says status. These lights are driven by some signals that come out of the 8080 processor right at the beginning of each bus cycle. Now the Altair CPU card latches these signals so that they are then there for the remainder of the bus cycle for the hardware to use and so we can see it here on the front panel. Alright, so the very first instruction in the list and the uh, program listing is a load accumulator from address 40. That's basically going to be a memory read for us. It's a three byte instruction. The very first byte is the actual opcode that says do a load. And that's what we're looking at here in the, uh, on the screen, excuse me, on the front panel right now. The 72 opcode is the load accumulator opcode. Two more bytes are required to complete the instruction to uh, specify the full 16 bit address to load from. All right, so what do we see here in the front panel? The front panel stops right in the middle of a bus cycle. We always know we're in the middle of a machine cycle or bus cycle. The 8080 data sheets call it a machine cycle. What do the lights tell us? This memory read light tells us that we are doing a read from memory. Makes sense, we're fetching an opcode. The M1 light tells us that we're in machine cycle 1. The definition of that is opcode fetch. Whenever this light is on, we know we're doing an opcode fetch. Finally, the WO light, which means right output light, is on. This one light is actually the only light that is inverted logic. So when it is on, the right output is actually false. So the fact that this light is on means it's not a right output, which makes sense because we're doing a read. All right, so this signature of memory read, opcode fetch, not a write, that tells us we're fetching an opcode. So let's go ahead and single step this. When we single step on the Altair, it just goes to the next machine cycle or bus cycle. What changed here? The memory, the M1 cycle light went off, meaning this is not an opcode fetch anymore, but it's still a memory read. It's not a write output. We've bumped up to address one and we're fetching the low byte of the address we're going to uh, get the data from. The low byte is a uh, octal 40. Single step to the next cycle, still just a memory read. Up to address two, we are fetching the high byte of the uh, fetch address, which is zero. So at this point, the CPU is going to have the opcode that says we're doing a load, and it has the full address, which is octal 40. All right, so we'll go to the next cycle. This is now the opcode, uh, the instruction actually fetching the data from address octal 40. Notice it's still just a simple memory read, just like the two fetches of the address were for the instruction. So reading data from memory is the same thing as, instru as the uh, instruction fetching parameters it needs. So it's not an opcode, but it is a memory read, not a write. And this is the data that happens to be in location octal 40 that the load is doing. Single step that, and we're back to an opcode fetch because it's still a memory read and the memory, excuse me, the M1 cycle light has come on. This is now the store version of the load instruction we just did. So this is going to store the value in the accumulator out to address octal 41. Also three bytes. So here's the opcode for the store. Go to the next memory cycle. Still a read cycle and the opcode fetch light has gone off. We're going to write to octal 41. There's the low byte. Still a memory read. There's the high byte. So now the CPU has everything it needs to do the store. So the next memory cycle is actually 
the operation writing to memory. We're writing to octal 41. It's not a memory read, so the light went off. It's not an opcode fetch. That light is off. It is a write output to anything at all. It doesn't matter whether it's memory or not. It is a write output. Since this light is inverted status, the fact that it's off means that it's true. It is a write output. So all those lights off is basically the signature of a, a write to normal RAM. All right. Are we writing all ones to that location? Probably not. Why are all those lights on? Well, if you recall from the earlier videos, the lights, the data lights are connected to the data input bus headed into the processor. Right now, that bus is just floating. Um, actually, there's pull-ups inside the CPU on the data bus, so they're getting pulled up to one, but even if it was floating, the TTL logic would show it as ones. So we don't get to see what's being written here in the Altair 8800. All right, let's complete that bus cycle, and that is done. We're back to an opcode fetch. Reading, opcode fetch, not a write. All right, the next instruction um, is setting up for two stack instructions. We're going to load the stack pointer with octal 40. So this is an opcode for load stack pointer. We'll just go ahead through the next two instructions. We'll get our read. It's loading octal 40 as the address that it's going to uh, use for stack operations. Okay, we're back to an opcode fetch. This is a push instruction. This is going to push the accumulator and the 8-bit uh, status flag, so it's going to be two 8-bit writes onto the stack. So here's the opcode fetch because our M1 light's on. All right, so here's something new. The address showing is one below the octal 40 that we loaded as the stack pointer. That's because a push operation first decrements the stack pointer, then writes the data. All right, so what it's doing is it's writing the accumulator to one less than the stack pointer was. Again, we don't get to see what's being written out. It's always going to show us all ones during a write. What do we have here? It's not a memory read or an opcode fetch. It is a write operation because the write light is now off. But now the stack light is on. Any operation that uses the stack turns on that stack light. So pushes and pops, uh, subroutine calls, subroutine returns, and interrupt entry and return will all generate the stack light. Conceivably, hardware could use totally different RAM for stack than it used for program storage, but in the case of the Altair, the same memory is used as for program storage and data. So here we are writing the accumulator to address um, 37. Next, we're now writing what would be the program status word or the, uh, the status flags to one location before that, which is address uh, three six again. It's a stack write because the light is off, not a read. All right, we're back to an opcode fetch. This opcode is a pop of that exact same information. So this is going to do the exact same thing except load those two locations. Let's take a look. We're doing a memory read. It's not a write output, but it is also stack. Here we're reading the program status word and specifically the flags from location two six. Now it's reading from location 2.7 to get the accumulator back. By the way, we can see what was written. But again, it's a read from the stack. It's not a write. Back to opcode fetch. Okay? This opcode is an input instruction from octal address 20. Input is not reading from memory. It's reading from an I.O. device. It's a very specific instruction for doing uh, input and output. We'll do that one next from an I.O. device. So right here is the opcode for an in. The next thing it has to do is read what port it wants to use. So we're just doing a memory read, and it's going to use port 2.0. Now the instruction can execute because it knows it wants to do an input operation from port 2.0. All right, so here's another new one. It's not a memory read. It's an input read, meaning it's a hardware input cycle, and it's not a write output. On the bus, the port is put on twice. So here in the low byte of the address, we see 2.0. And in the high byte of the address, we see the port number 2.0. So here's what's coming in from that port 2.0. Happens to be the serial port on the computer. That tells us it's okay to transmit. Doesn't make any difference really, but you can see that's what happened on this one. All right, now we're back to an instruction fetch. This fetch is an output to port 2.0. Again, this is an IO operation going out to port 2.0. It has to fetch what port to write to, so it's reading the port number. We're going to do port 2.0 again. Execute the next memory cycle. Now we're doing an output operation. It's not a read or an input, and the write output light is off, meaning this is a write output 
as with all writes, we don't get to see what we're writing. And the port number, 20, is put on the low byte of the address and the high byte of the address. Okay, that's a complete. All right, now we're back to an instruction fetch. This instruction fetch enables interrupts in the processor. Okay, so let's see what this does. Notice the interrupt enable light came on. All right, so this is not one of the status lights. The interrupt enable light just lets us see whether the processor currently has interrupts enabled or interrupts disabled. All right, we're back to an opcode fetch. This opcode is a disable interrupt instruction. So when this gets executed, you can see that the interrupt enable light went off. Interrupts are also automatically enabled, uh, disabled when a uh, instruction fetch occurs as part of an interrupt cycle. All right, the next instruction is a halt instruction. This is kind of an unusual one. Let's go ahead and execute this. All right, so at this point, memory read is on, halt acknowledge is on, and it's not a write. This signature of all the lights on plus halt tells us that the computer is in a halted state. Address lights are all on because the uh, 8080 processor has released the bus and the bus is floating, which looks like ones. Also, the data bus is not being driven, so it's essentially getting pulled up because the data bus has pull-ups on it, and so it looks like all ones. Uh, at this point, the computer is halted. Single step doesn't work. Examine doesn't work. Uh, you're basically locked up until you do a hard reset on the computer. That gets us back to where we were. All right, so that went through most of the combinations of the status light. We saw the interrupt enable light. The interrupt light We'll demonstrate that in the next video where we actually use a terminal and the serial I.O. port and have it acknowledge interrupts. So this light comes on when an instruction fetch is going on in response to an interrupt. All right, the protect light is a specific feature of the Altair 8800. It enabled the ability to protect pages of memory in case you didn't want code getting clobbered. Mainframe computers use this feature to protect the operating system once it had been loaded so that user code couldn't possibly clobber something important like uh, critical system code. With the, how this works is if you are in a particular page of memory, let's say here we're on address 0, we set protect, then anything within the page that 0 is located, you can't write to. Well, how big is a page? That's entirely dependent on how the RAM card implemented it if it even implemented the feature at all. Some cards implemented it in 1K pages. Some might have done 4K. This particular computer does it in 256 byte pages. So right now, address 0 is in the first 256 bytes of memory. That means that all of the first 256 bytes of memory are protected. And you can see, I could try to deposit 0 here. Doesn't happen. Try to deposit 0 in the next location. Doesn't work. Okay, That one happened to already have 0, I guess. Uh, but you can see that we can't write into memory. If I go outside of this page, let's go up to address um, 257 or 256 outside of that first page. Now, I can deposit anything I want into there, and it works. I can write successive zeros. But again, if I go back down into page 0, anywhere in there, let's, let's go to address 7. Even here, I can't write values to this. It's protected. To unprotect, simply hit the unprotect direction anywhere within that page. That feature is rarely used in the Altair. Again, it was borrowed from what the bigger computers did of the day, and um, it wasn't widely implemented in most RAM cards after that. All right, a um, couple other lights. The wait light comes on when we're in front panel mode. Uh, the reason it comes on is because the um, Front panel electronics is using the 8080's ability to extend memory cycles to allow slow memory to respond uh, and trick the 8080 into just basically waiting and waiting and waiting for that memory cycle to complete. So that is how this front panel uh, keeps the CPU stopped. It's just in a long, long wait loop for slow memory. Now if you're actually running a program, that light would either be off or if you had some memory in there that did require wait states, it might be glowing dimly. The hold acknowledge light was used when you had a board in the Altair bus that was also a bus master. For example, a DMA board or another CPU, it could actually request that the 8080 processor basically go into a hold state, release the bus, let this other processor or bus master run. 
but right now that light is off because the only bus master in this computer is the 8080 CPU itself. All right, so that's a brief introduction to these lights. We'll get into the interrupt light in the next video. Um, the computer we used here today is actually an Altair 8800 clone computer. This computer duplicates the look and feel, the features, performance of the real Altair, but it does it with modern hardware on the inside. This makes it a bit less expensive and more reliable than trying to use a vintage computer. It also lets you experience this great period in computing history hands-on without having to worry about damaging a, a vintage or museum quality computer. Be sure to visit AltairClone.com to learn more about this great machine.